Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Site B, specifically the ecosystems that encompass most of Isla Sorna. Now for those of you who don't know, Isla Sorna, or Site B as it's often called, was the island in which Engin bred most of its animals. You see, after a certain amount of time was given for the dinosaurs to grow and mature on this faraway island, they would eventually be rounded up and shipped off to Isla Nublar for exhibition in Jurassic Park. But after the incident of 1993, the plans for a working dinosaur park were promptly put on hold. And shortly after, Hurricane Clarissa would wipe out most of Engine's facilities on the second island. When that happened, a pretty high number of dinosaurs were released and left to fend for themselves in this modern day lost world. And as far as we know, from the mid-1990s all the way up to 2004, Site B was a place where dinosaurs lived in an undisturbed sanctuary off the coast of Costa Rica. Now the information that I'm about to go over in this video is derived from a few basic places. Namely, the two films from which Site B played a major part, The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. But secondly, I'm going to be going over the final population count done by Engine before the events of the second film, which was surveyed four years before Peter Ludlow's Harvest Team landed, as it was recorded in 1993. And that list states the following. As far as sauropods go, after the fall of Jurassic Park, Isla Sorna was home to 10 free brachiosaurs that were left on the island, as well as 4 living mamenchisaurs. These long necks were never recorded mixing together in either of the two films, so it can be deduced that they possibly lived in different parts of the island, with the mamenchis taking up refuge in the more redwood populated areas, while the brachs preferred to graze in a more tropical environment. Living close with both species were the parasaurs, whose populations sprawled to be quite vast across the island, which is pretty impressive once you understand that when Engine last recorded their numbers, there were only 13 animals that were living there in 93. After a long duration of breeding, we can assume that they were one of the more successful creatures when compared to many of the others. A relative of theirs that was possibly not so successful would have to be the Edmontosaurus, who were left with a total of only four specimens after 1993. But unfortunately, they were never seen in the flesh during either of the first two Jurassic Park sequels. In fact, the only time we got to see any evidence of Edmontosaurs living on Site B was when a skull of one of the animals was found decaying in the nest of a mated pair of Tyrannosaurs, suggesting they didn't make it too long after the company left. Interestingly, other herbivorous dinosaurs were absolutely thriving, with massive herds of Triceratops and Stegosaurs moving together in social groups all over Site B. Engine had only recorded 10 trikes and 11 Stegos living on the island before they left, so seeing them grow in numbers so quickly is pretty remarkable. The plant eaters' horns and spiked tails more than likely had a lot to do with their continued survival, which says a lot about Isla Sorna, because every day would definitely be a fight for survival once you look at the large number of carnivores. Site B was home to no less than six tyrannosaurs as of 1993. Engine had originally bred seven, but the oldest of the bunch was moved over to Jurassic Park in 1989. Two of the remaining six are known to have factually mated and produced offspring near the redwood portion of the island. And since it's been believed that Engine's Rex clones did indeed mate for life, it's safe to assume that the pair continued to live together in their territory for the rest of their lives. Also living in relative distance to their stomping grounds was a pack of vicious velociraptors. These animals were concentrated in the interior of the island and hunted primarily in long fields of elephant grass where their prey would be caught off guard once they'd foolishly wandered in. This tribe of velociraptors was known as the Tiger Striped Group. They were given this name due to their different colorations when compared to the other engine raptors, with the males being orange with black stripes and the females being orange with blue stripes. Living far away in another sector of the island, there was actually a completely different breed that took up territories in the more tropical climates. These raptors were very different from their long grass siblings though, because their skull structures were shaped in a more rigid manner, and instead of cat-like eyes, they actually had bird-like pupils. The females were easily identifiable with a white body and black spots. Well, the males can be seen with a much darker skin tone and a mohawk of quills adorning their heads. As of 1993, a total of 18 raptors were left to breed and grow on the island, with two groups taking up factions in different areas. 
Animals like the Gallimimus and Pachycephalosaurus were documented as to having taken up refuge in the dense wooded area of Site B, starting off with a respective 20 members for the Galleys and 9 members for the Pachys when the hurricane hit. Other dinosaurs would unfortunately never be documented. A small ceratopsian plant eater by the name of Microceratus was released in a herd of no less than 22 individuals when InGen left. However, not a single one of them was ever seen on the treks taken in 1997 or 2001. The same can be said for the Baryonyx, which was last seen living in a small group of five individuals in 1993. Similarly, a pair of Carnotaurus were bred and abandoned by InGen as well no record of their survival ever being accounted for after the company left. Sadly, the same fate could possibly have fallen onto the spitting Dilophosaurs, who were left in a rather impressive lot of 12 individuals before the hurricane stormed the island. However, no animal ever turned up in either Malcolm nor Grant's time on Site B. However, it was not all doom and gloom for the carnivorous dinosaurs that weren't raptors or rexes, because populations of pteranodons were known to have flourished in the wake of Site B's demise. Two genetic variations claiming territories in different spots on the island, with the more aggressive breed even making their ways out of Isla Sorna in a search for new nesting grounds. Compies were also quite successful after InGen left, with dozens of specimens known to have lived all over the second island, from the sandy beaches of Sorna's coasts all the way through to the most dense and tropical areas of the site. An initial 10 Pteranodon and 43 Compsognathus are known to have been living on the island before their numbers started to grow. And finally, new breeds of dinosaur were integrated into these environments in 1999. An unknown number of illegally cloned species, including the Ankylosaurus, Corythosaurus, and Ceratosaurus would soon invade and mingle with the initial bunch of animals that had been released by InGen. The Hadrosaurs were only seen to be grazing with their relatives, the Parasaurs, in the tropical regions of the island, and the Ankylosaurs were known to mingle with a wide variety of other dinosaur species as well. Only one Ceratosaur was ever reported on Sorna by Alan Grant and the Kirbys. What their exact numbers would have looked like is so far unknown. And the last dinosaur that we know for a fact lived on Site B was released onto the island in the same year. This carnivore was of course the massive and quite aggressive Spinosaurus, a gigantic predator that is known to have shown a great interest in and even killed Tyrannosaurs that were dispersed in the tropical sections of the island. Now, as far as we know, only one individual is known to have ever lived on Site B, and that individual, as well as the Yankees, Coreys, and Ceratosaur, are believed to have seriously disturbed the already fragile and delicate ecosystems that were made up of a wide variety of animals dating from all over the Mesozoic era. After these illegal species spread out across the lands of Site B, dinosaur relations soon began to take a hit, and this forced a great deal of extinctions to fall across the island in a rather short amount of time. As of 2018, the public believed that Site B had become a shadow of its former self, with geologists and scientists in the modern day citing their opinions that Isla Nublar was the home of the last living dinosaurs on the planet. The death toll on Site B is believed to have been far too massive for any of the original animals to have endured, and what little remaining creatures were able to be found were quickly caught and transferred across the ocean and into Jurassic World. It's been quite some time since we heard anything about Site B, News groups as popular as the BBC don't seem to believe that anything is left of John Hammond's lost world. But some of us have just a little bit of faith. Even though it's been over a decade since we last saw it, I personally have a feeling that something has survived. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Wes Mordine, David, and Ben Hall. Words can't really express how awesome it is to have you guys tell me how much you enjoy the stuff I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to help. Honestly, it means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always... Take it easy.